Who are we, ladies? We are the Tigers. When your feet hit the ground, you should be running. You're in the hunt for your next great championship. Who are we? We are Tigers! Who are we? We are Tigers! Inside LSU Gymnastics with Coach Didi Bro, brought to you by New Orleans Roast Coffee. Welcome to Inside LSU Gymnastics with Didi Bro. I'm Mike Smith, and joining me here to start the show tonight is Associate Head Coach Jay Clark. Jay, we come to you from this cavernous arena that's quiet right now, but about an hour ago, LSU was rocking the house when we started the Metroplex Challenge on the uneven bars with a 49-450. An amazing start to this great meet tonight. It was, and it was, you know, it was nice to see that the kids work that they've been doing in the gym finally carry over into a competition. And the thing that we did better than anybody else tonight was land. Uh, we stuck all six dismounts. And when you can do that, you're leaving that last impression on, uh, on the judges and it, and it generally pays dividends for you. So uh, it was just a great start to the meet. And uh, you know, what can you say? It was, uh, I knew they, I expected them to hit, uh, but I, I didn't know that I, we'd get that kind of performance. And boy, was I glad to see it. The Tigers go 9-8-7-5 with Jesse Jordan to lead things off. And she really helped set the tempo, Jay. Well, Jesse probably has been the one that I think has, uh, has sort of set the pace in terms of making changes, making corrections. She's been incredibly coachable um, to a point where we've had some days where we've been frustrated and uh, with each other. And, and she continues to handle it, continues to get better and better on her execution and her line. And um, just, uh, she has a very consistent approach to what she's doing. And I, I really think she's sort of solidified herself in that first spot. Uh, I know she was used there in the past as well. And I think that was a good decision. And, and it's, uh, she, she's, a, she's a great starter for us because that double layout, she lands it very well and um, gets us off to a great start. Jesse, just one of three sophomores to start the bars lineup tonight. Then you go with Lomencia Hall and Reagan Corville. Yeah. Switching them up in the order in yeah. the bars tonight, did that have an impact? Well, we moved Reagan down um, in the lineup, and so consequently we moved Lomencia down one spot. And so Lomencia went in the second spot where she had been in the third. Uh, but Lamencia is probably the most consistent performer that we've had on bars uh, all, all year to this point. So uh, I wanted to put two very consistent routines ahead of Reagan so that it would settle her down. I felt like maybe in, in a couple spots she had gotten a little tight when people had made mistakes ahead of her and, uh, and tried to do too much. And so if we could, I just thought we'd give it a shot and see how that worked out to put two consistent kids ahead of her and see if she could settle in. And she did a good job of that tonight. And, and uh, so Lamencia and, and, and Reagan really, really sort of kept the ball rolling after Jesse did. So Lamencia Hall and Reagan Corville with 985-995 in consecutive events. And then Jay, you go to a freshman in Randy Weirich who bounces back beautifully. Yeah, and Randy, Randy has got a, uh, gives us a different look. She's got a really long line. Uh, and when she's extended on top of the bar, it's a, it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty line and, and uh, she gives us that. And so we like her in that fourth spot. And I thought, you know, leaving her there, particularly if Reagan had success would be good. And, and uh, she, had, she had been up and down, you know, she'd missed two routines for us so far this year. But I think most of that's just being a freshman. And, uh, she, but she did a great job in a, in a very intense, loud environment. You know, this place was going berserk right out of the gate. And uh, I thought she handled herself very well. A little tentative on some of her handstands still. Um, but otherwise a very solid routine for us. You made the key decision to go with experience in the fifth slot tonight with Kaylee Dixon, a yeah. redshirt junior, yeah. and she delivered with a 9-9. Yeah, and uh, you know, Kaylee had been working very hard and, and, and probably over the last month and a half um, has just continued to steadily improve. It's not exactly where we want it yet. Uh, her bail to handstand needs to get a little more on top and things, but that dismount, again, if you looked at all the dismounts, her dismount was a half and half out that she landed straight up and down and just mm -hmm. drilled it. And, and when you do that, uh, it's very hard for the judges to, uh, to to take too much from you. And really probably just being a little half tenth short on a handstand and half tenth short on a bail was the only thing it could take. And she goes 9-9. Nine, nine. And it's great to see because I know she struggled on that event a lot last year. And, and uh, for her to get back out there and do it in the all around was, was fun for her tonight. And what can you say about one of the four Texans on this LSU team? Mm -hmm coming back into uh, her home environment yeah. and an anchor on the bars, and that's Sari Morrison, uh, the junior from Dallas. Yeah, and I thought that was the one place that probably was a, a little bit underscored. I thought, you know, in spots, uh, scores were uh, not, not necessarily high, but, but uh, certainly uh, generous and, and uh, not tight. Uh, 
Uh, series I thought was a better routine than what the, than what the score indicated. I thought it was uh, our best routine of the mm -hmm. night, and uh, there's a reason she's the anchor. And Sari is the most consistent-minded uh, kid that we have, and uh, just really goes about her business incredibly professional. She's a real pro at everything that she does, and and it's um, it's she's a joy to work with because you just know that no matter what happens ahead of her in that anchor spot, Sari's just going to be Sari, and that's a that's a that's a good place to be as a coach because you can. You can sit back and relax and, and trust that it's going to be good. So the Tigers deliver in a big way with a 49-4-5-0 to get the meet started. And that is where it really got going great because the Tigers moved to beam and then finished the meet on the two stronger events uh, on floor and then on vault. And it was a great night. 197-1, Jay. Uh, it's been it's been three seasons since the Tigers have gotten to the 197 mark, and it was a credit really to starting the, starting really with a, with a great score on bars. Well, and we've got to be able to do that. You're going to be able to do that on the road. You may draw that at championships. You've got to be able to open strong, and uh, and make sure that you finish even stronger. And that's the biggest thing we did tonight. We started fast and we finished strong, and that's a winning combination. When we come back after this short break, we'll be joined by LSU head coach D.D. Bro, and we'll recap the rest of this outstanding meet from the Fort Worth Convention Center in Fort Worth, Texas. Inside LSU Gymnastics with D.D. Bro has been brought to you by New Orleans Roast Coffee, the LSU Tiger Spotters, Wow Cafe American Grill and Wingery, Flying Tigers Gymnastics Camp, PJ's Coffee, and Glenn Armenter Pay It Forward Scholarship Program of Excellence. Join Coach D.D. Bro and the 2013 LSU Gymnastics team as they stand right up and roar. The Fighting Tigers home schedule includes Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and more. Tickets are available at the door or online at lsutex.net. Catch the most exciting show in town, all for a price that's cheaper than the movies. Bring your friends, bring your family, bring the fun. LSU Gymnastics, something to roar about. For more information, log on to lsusports.net. Who are we? We are Tigers! Who are we? We are Tigers! Inside LSU Gymnastics with Coach Didi Bro. Amazing. I mean, we have a lot to celebrate. We also have a lot to work on, but I think this gives us more confidence in the gym, and we're going to bring that with us, and we're going to get even better. It was unbelievable. We hit, we were confident, we were really excited, not really thinking about doing bad, just going out there doing what we had to do, and we did. Oh, it was unbelievable. We're back, and now LSU head coach Didi Bro joins us after a terrific meet inside the Fort Worth Convention Center in Fort Worth, Texas tonight. The Tigers with a 197-10 and finishing second to the second-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. And Didi, on the balance beam tonight, uh, the, the kids look like they just fought and fought for everything that they earned this evening. You know, all that energy and all that hype and everything that we had, the momentum that we had on bars, you have to bring them down. And um, I was a little concerned when we got over there and there was some tentativeness. They were, there wasn't a, a sharp edge on what we were doing. And then Erica went first and very uncharacteristic body breaks. It wasn't that push and, and, and sharp, crisp performance that we're used to. Next one up, Kaylee Dixon. Um, Kaylee's performance, you know, she stayed on, and I have pushed her all week long to open that open that routine with a one arm back handspring, back lay, back lay, which is a four tenth combination. When she does that, it puts her routine at the highest level. Jessica Savona went up, and she did things that that I have been asking her to do. Thing, she she did her beam today like it's been coached, and uh, we changed her leap combination. And she, she does a sison, and I, I just felt like she wasn't mentally tough. She wasn't. Um, as good as she had been all week long on that routine and then took a big step on the dismount. And, um, you know, Oklahoma went to beam way after us and stuck dismounts. You know, but when you do a big double back, you got to stick it. You got you to you have, you have your feet underneath you and know where your landing is. And then Lamencia went, I, and I felt like that was probably as good a beam as she's done all year long, the exception of not sticking her dismount. But her layout was good, her leaps were good. She came down with nice soft landings on the beam. Um, she had such a crowd here and she just, you know, carried that with her, went to being very poised and did a good job and kind of was setting Reagan up to, to, to get after it again. And then Reagan, as beautiful as her beam was, she was a little bit tentative, held back a little bit. I know what we need to work on next week and I think they do too. 
Jesse Jordan was a great anchor tonight, again on the balance beam with a 9.825, and I really felt like that that gave you some momentum after she posted that high, high score for the Tigers. Going into the flow exercise, Didi, and I felt like that at that point in time, the meat was really ours to get. Well, it was ours to get, and I think Jesse had the right mindset on beam. She went up and she was very poised, very polished, beautiful routine, and then took a hop. And, and and I can tell you, she did not hop on one dismount all week long, and we did 18 routines this week, and she stuck probably 18 out of 18. Wow. So she got up there and did the job and then took the hop. The difference in this meet tonight was us not sticking beam dismounts, even wobbling, even being tentative. You stick, give me those sticks back, give me those easy ones. Take the steps on the double backs. Give me the easy ones back, we win the meet. So, you know, it goes back to that mantra, everything counts. Tigers go in the third rotation tonight, move over into the floor exercise, one of the stronger events for the Tigers all season long. 9-8-2-5 is the leadoff score by Kaylee Dixon, and, and you really felt like that Kaylee gave you that spark tonight with a 9-8-2-5 to build on, and sure enough, that's what happened. Kaylee did a great job. She tumbled strong. She had a little hesitation maybe on one of her landings, but everything was tight. Everything was, was just a lot of precision right into the corners and very clean. And she's exciting to watch. And her leap combination is getting better. That was the weak part of her routine last year. And we've done a lot of individual work on that. And Ashley has done a tremendous job with, with the choreography and molding those routines to fit their personalities. And uh, I think the kids were ready to get out there and tumble tonight and, and do it for what they felt like was a home crowd. And nearly was. Several hundred Tiger fans in the crowd tonight made the Fort Worth Civic Center really feel more like the PMAC at times, to be quite honest. And of course, throughout the floor exercise, Didi, you know, with Jesse Jordan, Jessica Savona, and Malia Mathis really in the heart of the order, 9875-9999, and you felt like that something special was in the air. Yeah, well, Jessica Savona's parents were here from Canada, and, you know, she, she loves to compete. And we've said it before, she's not much for practice. And, you know, once we can break that habit, and get her to practice better, I think her performances even go to the next level. Savona really proved that she's the best tumbler in the house tonight. And um, after Savona goes, then Malia Mathis. Um, and Malia has struggled in practice, so we were a little bit, you know, kind of questioning what, she, what sure. she had. But, you know, here again, you got the Texas crowd. Her coaches were here, her age group coaches were here, and other teammates. And she really blasted out a beautiful double layout. Her, her middle pass front to double tuck, she landed everything with her chest up, she was very exact, and then nailed her double pike in the end, and she earned every bit of the 9-9 she got. Well, then it's time for Reagan Corville and Lamencia Hall to really bring down the house, and Reagan with that gorgeous choreography tonight with a 9-9, gets a 9-9-5 from one judge, a 9-8-5 from a second judge, and that's how she got to the 9-9 average. But then Lamencia Hall, you really felt like that, um, it was just a special night for her with as many folks as she had in the crowd tonight, Dee, Dee uh, seeing her back home here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and uh, save one tumbling pass. Uh, she had a perfect night on the floor. All Mincy had to do was go out there and dance and tumble, which she does, and I think she tried to overperform tonight. Her double layout in the beginning, beautiful. Let's hear from Randy Lau, who broke into the vault lineup tonight for the first time in the 2013 season, and also from Kaylee Dixon, who bested her career high with a 39-275 in the all-around this evening. It feels great. It's just I had the whole support of my team, and they were so supportive, and it was just such a great environment, and I'm so happy to be a part of this team. It felt awesome. We had a little trouble on beam, but we got the momentum going again on floor and vault. And it was awesome. It's our highest score yet, and I'm just really proud of our team because we've been working so hard. For years, we've maintained our track record of success for those hurt while giving back to the community. Doing what's right has its rewards, and we're honored to be called the best by you. Earlier this year, a jury of tens of thousands of people, many of you, considered the facts, the evidence, and made a just decision of which law firm is the best. The verdict is in. For the fifth year in a row, thank you.
This week's wow performer is Malia Mathis. Two events, vaulting, 9-9, and then she rocked the house on floor with a 9-9. Welcome back to Inside LSU Gymnastics. The Tigers of LSU headed into the final rotation in the Fort Worth Convention Center tonight. Texas Quartet on this Tiger team between uh, or among Malia, Malia Mathis, Lomencia Hall. Of course, we also talk about Jesse Jordan earlier, but Sari Morrison tonight. Really, the four Texans stood really tall uh, tonight for the LSU Tigers. They did, and they took the momentum that, that they, they had from floor, um, the energy that they had on bars carried over to the energy on floor, and they went to vaulting and were not going to be denied. And, you know, Bob does a fabulous job of pacing them and doing what they need to do during the week, and uh, he got the very, very most out of his vaulting lineup and inserted. We, you know, started out with Kaylee Dixon like we always do, but inserted. Um, Randy Lau, who gave us some great vaults last year, and Bob felt like she was ready, and so we, I let him, you know, insert her in the lineup, um, and she just, she nailed it. She flew. It was just a beautiful vault for her, um, and then we've been waiting for Malia to, to turn that half and stick it, and we, you know, we took Lamencia out right. because of a sticking issue, and Malia just nailed it. It was beautiful. It was just, it like floated. I didn't think it, it would did. ever come down nailed it. And of course, when you do that, then it sets up the end of your lineup. Um, I didn't talk about Savona, but uh, Jessica Savona comes down and does a vault that's as good as what she did last last week at, at Tuscaloosa. You want to build momentum, you want to build on your performance, and I think she did that tonight. Sari Morrison wins the vault competition tonight with a 9925 in front of another home crowd for her from Dallas, just right down the road. Had several dozen fans in attendance tonight, and then Reagan Corville finishes up the vault tonight with a 9-9. Didi, the second half of tonight's meet in the Fort Worth Convention Center in this huge facility for the Tigers, just one-tenth away from 99 points. An amazing second half to this meet tonight. Yeah, it was, fab it was a fabulous meet, a, a great opportunity for, for people to see fabulous gymnastics. Um, and it was a championship environment. It was an electric environment. Teams pushed each other. The, the who was ahead kept changing throughout the night. It did. And it made it exciting for our kids. It was exciting for, I think, I know the fans enjoyed it. The judges were thrilled to be a, a part of this event. But um, I'm telling you what, our team walked away feeling like champions, mm -hmm. knowing that the team that's, you know, that beat them was, you know, good enough to be national champions. They're ranked number two right now. And, uh, we're on their heels. So the, the, the test is going to be for us. Can we get better? Can we improve our performance? Can we become tougher? And I think that's going to be our challenge down the road. Much of LSU's success on the floor exercise this season has been credited to Ashley Claire Kearney, a two-time national champion, and Dee, Dee she has done a terrific job with the choreography this year for LSU. You know, Mike, it's no secret. I think she's the best. You know, she won the NC2A title her senior year on floor. She brings a lot to the team. She's a law student. Her, her plate is full, and she makes time for us, and she loves this team, and she loves what she's doing. Let's take a look at a great piece that talks about Ashley Claire Kearney's coaching philosophy. Ashley is, is um, a remarkable young lady and you know I still remember the day she stepped on this campus. She has been very very special and has been very close to my heart and my family. She's, she's like a daughter. I knew that LSU was a place that I wanted to be. It, I felt a sense of family and I felt that everybody that I encountered really cared about me as a person and me growing and developing into the human being that I am today. And then she comes in the gym every day and does this remarkable choreography. She's extremely original and talented and can um, take an individual person like, like a Reagan Corville and create a floor routine for Reagan that is all Reagan and then take a Lamencia Hall who is a totally different type of athlete and create a routine for her that has her personality in it. And it's not Ashley's personality, it's their stuff. And that's, that's a really unique quality for a choreographer. From there, keep it up, yeah. So when I go around, I think that's when I'm... That's fine if you open it, but make sure you're paying attention to it being high, yes. And when you do that, follow your hand a little bit. You don't have to do all the way, but just a little bit. Change your direction, yeah. Dee Dee calls me the voice of reason because I'm kind of that liaison between the two because the girls feel like they can talk to me. It's easier to talk to me. And the coaches look at me as another coach now and they see what I went through and how much I've grown. So they respect what I have to say. From a coaching standpoint, 
I, I love floor, I love competing floor, and so it's, it's a passion that I have. When I do their choreography, it's a lot of fun. We work together um, really well, and I think that I, can, I bring the personality and the best out of each of them individually. Yeah, ACK brings to the table a, a unique perspective. Having been a, a student athlete at the highest level, having won the way she did, and having demanded a level of excellence from herself, having someone like ACK on our staff really um, gives us an advantage that way in that she's able to, re to relate to them and to, to sort of be that sounding board for them when they need it and be that buffer and that go-between between, between uh, the full-time staff and, uh, and the student athletes themselves. Road trips with the Tigers are always fun and our Ashley Lee has put together this great piece that I think you'll really enjoy. Students everywhere agree, LSU is a phenomenal choice. Experience the campus where passion becomes genius. Now, only at LSU. For years, we've maintained our track record of success for those hurt while giving back to the community. Doing what's right has its rewards, and we're honored to be called the best by you. Earlier this year, a jury of tens of thousands of people, many of you, considered the facts, the evidence, and made a just decision of which law firm is the best. The verdict is in for the fifth year in a row. Thank you. An exciting night of gymnastics at the Fort Worth Convention Center has come to a close and the Fighting Tigers of LSU with a 197-1. It's the highest score the Tigers have had as a team in over three seasons of action. And Dee Dee, it was a very special night inside this arena here to this evening. It was a great night and I think the, the level of competition and it was it had a super six atmosphere in it because it was teams from all over the country that were here to compete and it's like we were competing for a championship. So that's just going to about wrap it up here from the Fort Worth Convention Center. When one week from tonight we'll be in uh, Lexington, Kentucky as the Tigers get back into Southeastern Conference action against the Kentucky Wildcats and you can always catch that action live in the go zone free of charge. 555 Central Time is our air and 6 o'clock starts the meet between the Tigers and the Wildcats. Until then, for head coach Didi Bro, I'm Mike Smith saying thank you for watching Inside LSU Gymnastics. Inside LSU Gymnastics with Didi Bro has been brought to you by New Orleans Roast Coffee, the LSU Tiger Spotters, Wow Cafe American Grill and Wingery, Flying Tigers Gymnastics Camp, PJ's Coffee, and Glenn Armenter Pay It Forward Scholarship Program of Excellence.